So the question we're going to deal in this video is page 42, this bottom question here, figure 3.13. So the plan of a square base pyramid and a sphere resting on the horizontal plane, so that means it's resting on the ground, are shown in figure 3.13. They are in contact with each other. Draw the plan and elevation of the solids showing the point of contact. The pyramid has an altitude of 58 millimeters. Okay? So it gives over here my plan view of the sphere and the pyramid. So if I'm looking at this straight away, right, what information can I actually draw? So I have the angle there that the pyramid is at, and I have the length of one of the sides, and it's a square base pyramid, so we know all the sides are the same. So I'll be able to draw that square base pyramid in plan. In elevation, I know the line that the sphere is going to be on, but I don't know the distance the sphere is from the, the apex of the pyramid. I know the radius of the sphere, but that doesn't really help me in drawing it in plan. So I can't draw this for a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a square base pyramid in plan and elevation, and we'll, we'll have a little think about then what's our next um, plan of action after that. So, set up my x, y, line. Forty-five degrees. Fifty-two millimeters long. Do you know what? Accuracy. I'll set that in my compass. Just so I can keep the four sides the exact same. Fifty-two. Show you my corners. Check it up into elevation. And the height of it there is giving the question 58 millimeters. So I'm going to keep this line light for the time being because my sphere is going to be here so there's some section of this is going to be hidden. Same here in my plan, I'm going to keep it light just for a second. So when you're doing the drawing you can keep it light all the time until the very end of the drawing. It's just I like going over it and maybe now so it comes out better in the camera feed. There we go. So that's my square base pyramid in plan and elevation. Okay? So because it's resting here on the ground, okay, I need to find the point or the center where I can draw that sphere. I know it's going to be along an imaginary line here, but I need to find the actual point of my center. Okay? What we can do, thinking back to chapter one, we can set up an auxiliary elevation. So if we remember auxiliary elevations are basically looking at the shape in a different way, in a different angle, okay? So our sphere is going to be going here. If we look in this side of the sphere here, we'll see where the sphere and the pyramid touch each other exactly. We will see that point of contact if we look in this direction, okay? So we're going to do that. We're going to look in this direction, set up our sphere touching our pyramid, and bring it back to our views then to find where it is in elevation and plan, okay? So, fill up my colors. I'm gonna put my X, Y line in red. And I'm gonna set up an X1, Y1, perpendicular to that line on the ground, yeah? To that line there on the ground. Yeah. 
y1 x1 same as before now I'm going to draw my pyramid back up here so what do I do I bring all my points perpendicular to my x1 y1 Think you're on the ground. Where do I get my heights? I go back two views. One view, two views. So I get my heights off of elevation. So all I need, so at this point and this point on the ground, this point, this point on the ground, all I need is my apex height. That's my apex height. I can now join these back. So and like so. Okay, what I need to do now is I need to draw a sphere over here that's touching the side of the pyramid and then I can just bring it back through my views. How am I going to draw a sphere here that's touching the side of the pyramid though, okay? So, we know the height of the sphere off the ground, the centered height. So, in the question it said the sphere is touching the horizontal plane. That means it's going to be touching ground here in elevation. If it's touching the ground in elevation, it's going to be touching the ground in the auxiliary elevation. Here. I know the radius of that sphere, so I'm going to measure the radius of that sphere up here from the x1, y1 and draw a line parallel to x1, y1. Okay, so the radius of the sphere is 24. I'm going to mark my 24 here. And now I'm going to draw a line parallel to the x1, y1, or parallel to the ground. So the x, y line represents the ground. Okay? So parallel. Ground. So somewhere along that line now, this sphere is resting, the center of this sphere is resting. Yeah? Because it's touching the side of the pyramid, what I can do is bisect the angle between the x1, y1 and the side of the sphere, side of the pyramid, sorry. And where that bisecting line meets this 24 millimeter high line is going to be the center of my sphere. So I'm going to bisect that angle so first. That's the angle bisected. And where they are at the meeting now, where are my 24 height line and my bisecting line at the meeting? I can drop that straight down. You can either drop it straight down or just get the distance, get the get the height of it on your compass. I'm gonna drop it straight down for accuracy first to the XY line. I'm gonna drop this down perpendicular to the XY line x1, y1. I'm going to get that distance on my compass and I'm going to draw in my sphere. So that's my sphere there now, drawn in in the auxiliary. Okay? If we want to find the point of contact in between this sphere and the pyramid, what we do is we go perpendicular from the side of the cone to the center point of the sphere. So that right there now is our POC point of contact. So we just go perpendicular to the side of the pyramid into the center of that sphere. So we have the donkey work done now, boys, right? So all we have to do now is bring back our points up through our views and we'll finish off the drawing. Okay? So it gives us in the, in the question that the center line of the sphere is out here at 45 degrees as well from the apex of the pyramid. So along that line somewhere is the center of the sphere. All I have to do is bring back the center of the sphere from auxiliary elevation. That's my center point there now. Set my radius on my compass. I should have kept the radius on the compass just for speed but set my radius on the compass just that. my 
point contact back until I hit that line also. Because the point of contact is going to be from the center of the sphere outwards. So that's there now, is my point of contact in plan. I'm going to use a blue colour there just to show you the centre line travelling also. The centre of the sphere travelling. So that's the centre of the sphere travelling there. Okay. And to bring it to elevation. So I have the plane now the sphere found. So to bring it to elevation then. I have to do is bring it straight up. I know the radius of the sphere, just set my compass, it's touching the ground, it's touching the horizontal plane, so it's touching the XYZ, so I can just swing that distance up from the ground. I can just draw in my sphere, okay? So that's how I got the sphere in elevation. Now, how do I get the point of contact in elevation? So, it's easy to bring it straight up, but where exactly is it going to be up here, I wonder? Yeah? So, when I was drawing my auxiliary elevation, I used my elevation for heights. So, if I'm on this view here, one view, two view, I can go back and get my distance of my point of contact here from my auxiliary elevation and mark it in my elevation. So, I'm going to bring up the point of contact straight up from plan first. Just bring it straight up. Yeah. Now I'm going to get my distance from the x1, y1 to the point of contact, which is that. And I'm going to swing that over here until it crosses that green line, which is this mark here. That now is my point of contact in elevation. So, that's the sphere of radius 24 found touching the square base pyramid in the three views. That's the question finished there and all that's everything the answers to do.